Welcome to a Twisted Metal Customs. It's finally happening. It's going this afternoon, dropping it off at the Sandblaster, Sandblasterer's place. And tomorrow I pick it up and be epoxy coating it. So I'm just getting all the doors and trims off and all the chrome. So she's pretty well stripped down to be able to get blasted. And I'm freaking excited. I've been waiting my whole life to do one of these up and it is finally happening and i am ecstatic so hopefully it doesn't uncover too much nasties but original paint original uh, paint car it's going to be i think pretty honest it's going to be an honest car it's not going to be too much bog or any bog in it at all because you can see the sunburnt paint it's basically down to the metal so it's always you know, recommended when you're doing a nut and bolt restos to get a blasted because it gets in every nook and cranny, and I mean everywhere because it takes weeks to get all the sand out afterwards, but it's worth it. So let's get it, I'm excited. Also, I forgot to add, if you haven't seen the XP build, the last seven episodes have been about that. So if it looks cool, you'll learn how to do a budget build on this one, go check them out. This one, is not going to be as budget unfortunately i'm still going to do it on the cheap but right so this one's going to be a six to twelve month build that one was a two month build so let's get it loaded on the trailer and then we'll get it over to the blasterer's place and unload it and patiently wait for tomorrow We're back from the San Lazarus place and it is looking really good. We ran out of diesel in the air compressor right there. <laughs> so pretty good. But she has some rust. It looks good from afar, but yeah, she's uncovered quite a bit of the metal worm. There's pieces underneath. In the wheel well this sill wasn't too bad the other sill was rotten got back sections there there we got just pinholes this whole back lower dog leg section the boots actually the best piece of the whole lot back tailgate uh, the back tail light sections okay we got rust here all the back section all underneath is primed. The back boot floor is just Swiss cheese. So quite a bit of uncovered rust in the old girl. But I am not disheartened too much because I still have faith. And it still, at the end of the day, it's going to be a charger. So a lot of work just make me appreciate it a bit more. And it's just going to extend the restoration period but engine bay looks pretty good so what i have done yesterday i just painted the front end the engine bay all under the body 
um, because that's what we got done in the first day. And today, yesterday we finished late, so I just tucked it in the shed so I didn't get any frost or dew on it because I don't want it to rust. And then today I'm going to pull it out, give the shed a good clean up because it is filthy from the XP build, just crud everywhere. So give it a bit of a birthday, tidy up, and then I'll get all the panels out and then I'll put all the panels in the booth and give them a spray coating and then I'll proceed to do the whole body and inside and boot with epoxy primer. So that is today's efforts. Okay, about eight hours later, it's all primed up uh, besides the boot. I haven't done inside the boot, but I'm running out of daylight. So I've got all that done. So much sand came out of it. It's really good having a sandblasted, but make sure you vacuum and blow everything out 20 times. Otherwise you'll get sand dust everywhere, but it came up pretty good. Just side of this, with all the rust. Yeah, I know. It's pretty bad. It's it's typical, I, would, I should say, typical for these era cars. But I don't give a shit. It's a charger. It might just take me another year to do it up. But yeah, still looks awesome. But yeah, I think I dare say rare spares might be called a few times for some replacement panels. I've got the shed somewhat tidied up. Just the one and a half bays, but behold, the charger will be back in this bay and then no more room. There's a lot of good parts of it, a lot of bad parts, but they're sort of localised, so shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. Yes, this is me being optimistic. All right, cheerio. You got a charger that you're trying to get off the trailer by yourself, and you got to push it uphill. Hitch it across the front of the trailer. Run through a pulley, goes to the back. Pulls car forwards, and worst case, it's still connected. If it rolls down the hill, it's still got the strap. Brilliant. <laughs>